All right, I'm going to do a quick review here upon request of the APM 2.5 Ardu Pilot Mega Autopilot and Flight Control System. It's a great system, very reasonably priced. If you compare it to other systems that have stabilized mode or fly-by-wire mode, return to launch with the GPS enabled and an OSD system, I don't think you can beat the price because in addition to that, you get a full-fledged autopilot system with nearly unlimited waypoints, a ground control station, actually multiple ground control stations, uh, the ability to connect 3DR telemetry radios in either 900 megahertz or 433 megahertz versions and communicate with your plane or helicopter real time. In this case, Ardu plane. Mission Planner is a pretty nice ground control station. It has a bunch of functionality which we'll go through and a bunch of functionality which I won't go through. Uh, this gives you the ability to interact with the APM 2.5 board through either telemetry radio or through the USB plug on the board. So what you see here is the flight data page. On the left hand side of the screen you're going to have your HUD or heads up display which you can choose to display whatever telemetry data is available. There's probably at least 40 options on the right hand side you have the map and on the left bottom you have uh, multiple tabs for uh, quick view actions that you can perform while the plane is in flight if you have telemetry. Um, you select the action and click do action. Uh, you can click on the gauges tab and see you know, kind of flight control type gauges. Status shows you the telemetry live feed in a text display. You can also replay telemetry logs within Mission Planner or export them to Google. The three most commonly used autopilot settings for most people, I would say, would be a fly-by-wire, stabilize, and return to launch. In stabilize mode and or fly-by-wire mode, you can see the control surfaces responding to changes in the orientation or offset from level of the APM 2.5 board. The next tab is the flight planner interface. You can click anywhere on the map to begin drawing waypoints. Uh, you can draw, I don't know how many waypoints or what the limit is, but you can put a lot of them. I've done hundreds, um, at least a over a hundred, I guess, uh, at once uh, without a problem. And what the plane will do is when you, you launch and switch to autopilot, it will fly through the route that you determine with your waypoints, and then it will fly back to home and loiter. So it switches to RTL after the final waypoint. If you're interested in doing more mapping or surveillance type work, uh, I guess scanning type work, you can... The ground control station supports uh, auto waypoint production, in which case you draw a polygon um, or a box on the map, and you can generate auto waypoints in the form of a grid, grid, otherwise known as a lawnmower pattern, and the plane will fly that pattern. And if you have a mapping camera on board, you can set it with an intervalometer, for example, and it will take repeated shots through that pattern, and you can later... Uh, merge them into a mosaic and potentially geo-reference them. On many of the mission planner screens, you have the ability to write and read to and from the APM. Mission planner has an interface for calibrating APM 2.5 to your radio. Uh, in this case, I'm using a Turna G9X. It's pretty straightforward. You click the button, give it the extents of both sticks in the upper and lower corners. You also have the ability to use your radio controls to switch between flight modes. Uh, you have drop down menus in this interface and you could set as many as six if your radio allows for it. You also have the ability to set two different fail safes, one for your radio based on the throttle inputs and one for the ground control station if you're using telemetry. Mission Planner also has an interface for configuring various hardware options. Most common for our plane would be an air sensor. It also has a battery monitor setup interface. Uh, APM 2.5 currently comes with uh, the autopilot battery sensor. There's also controls for a camera gimbal. Um, in this, 
this case, most people are using it on copters, but you could also configure this for mapping or even for surveillance. Also have an interface for setting up your 3DR radios there. This is essentially the same as the external software that you can download uh, that's outside the mission planner. This is built in. The heart of the autopilot system um, is summed up in the Arduplane PID section. And these are where you tune your autopilot. I'm not going to go through these in detail here, but um, you can read up on PIDs and PIN controllers. There is an abundance of parameters that you can set under the advanced parameter section as well. You can save your own parameter files, load parameter files from other users and from DIY drones page on Google. There's a simple interface for leveling or calibrating the level position of the APM 2.5. You can set it to calibrate each startup or manually. Let's get back to Minim OSD. Um, this board, you'll want to have an FTDI cable uh, in order to upload firmware, character set, and interact with it using the config tool. The config tool allows you to set up actually multiple panels, which you could use a switch on your controller to move between. You can turn on and off different um, telemetry information and move it around the video screen. I like to keep it relatively simple as you can see in this video. Um, this is an example of using fly-by-wire A. It's very controllable. In this case in uh, 15 to 20 mile an hour winds, 25 to 30 mile an hour gusts, and I'm intentionally flying low to see how well I can maintain control and as you can see it's it's pretty good it's actually fantastic um, so I'm very impressed and this is not fully tuned um, this video is another just having fun low flying and uh, messing around in fly-by-wire A the winds were much lower this day 10 to 12 miles an hour but um, again this is not fully tuned I can sure I can tighten it up a little bit but it's it's very controlled at high and low altitudes and uh, it's a lot of fun uh, I should mention that APM 2.5 is the only autopilot system that I have used uh, I did research prior to buying it and uh, I found that there are you know there are a lot of other systems out there in the um, a roughly $300 price range that offer out-of-the-box pretty well tuned already um, maybe not full autopilot systems but stabilization uh, like a stabilized mode or pilot assist or and maybe fly-by-wire as well as return to launch as long as you have GPS um, but I find that if you I believe anyway that if you're willing to put in some time uh, and effort learning how to tune the system Ultimately, you get a much more advanced system than just a pilot assist. It's a full autopilot system. So, if you're interested in that, um, I, I recommend APM 2.5.